Welcome all to today's lecture. Myself, Assistant Professor Tukur Gupta from Ajay Kumar Garg Engineering College, Ghazibad. The subject that I am covering in my lecture series is embedded system. Subject code is KOE062. The topics that I am covering today in my lecture are timer and counting devices, watchdog timer and real time clock. So, let us have a look what are these. So, let, let me introduce you all to the terms timer and counter. These are these both are very confusing terms. These are the part of microcontroller internal hardware. Timer and counter are same as per the hardware point of view. Okay. So, what is the confusion then? Timer is used to generate the delay and counter is used for counting the external events. So, this is the difference. There is very small line between the timer and counter which differentiate them and but one thing is common that both these timer and counter modules have internal counter register which plays an important role. So, let us talk about the counter first. These are the hardware mechanisms for counting some form of events. So, this, this term is common to both that these both these are related to the events. At the heart of the counter is a special purpose register. What is this special purpose register doing? That it will store the current value of the counter. So, so whenever the counter run, it will always hold some value which is telling us that what is the current count. So, this special purpose register is fulfilling that it is storing the current counter value. Any time that a certain event occurs, the value of this counter is incremented. Okay. So, whenever the event comes, whenever the event occurs, this counter is updated. So, in this way it will always hold the current value of the counting. The type of event that causes this increment is typically configurable. We can configure it that what type of event is to be uh, taken care of and how this is done by using the special purpose registers again. So, in any of the processor system there are certain registers which are used to configure the this special purpose registers and we can configure the type of the counting that uh, type of the events. Because the counter value is stored in a special purpose register this implies that the value can also be because this is a register it register can be read as well as we can write to the register. So, when a register is holding the current count value, so it means that we can also write some value and we can also read that value at any instant. So, also different counters will store the different values of different sizes. Because of this finite size, the counter can only count up to a maximum limit. So, suppose there is a 8 bit count, uh, 8 bit register. So, since the register is holding the register, uh, the count. So, if the size of the register is 8 bit, then it, it is 8 bit counter. So, it will count from 0 to 255 only. And if that special purpose register is 16 bit, so it will make a 16 bit counter and the range will be 0 to 65535. So, in this way different sizes of the counters determine the different sorry different sizes of the register that is special purpose register will determine the different sizes of the counter or we can say it will determine the range of the counter. So, when we want to count events, we connect external event. Example, what is the event? What we understand by the term event? That is there must be some rising pulse or the falling pulse, this is the event. So, we have to connect that event that is the rising edge or the falling edge source to the input pin of the timer or counter module. So, until and unless we connect uh, that external event to the counter input, we cannot read the value. So, first of all we have to connect the external events whether it is the falling edge or the rising edge to the input of the counter. 
when external event occurs the value of the counter increments. The value of the counter represents the number of external events. So, there is some example. Suppose the IR sensor is connected to the wheel of the vehicle and this IR sensor is supposed to calculate the rotations the wheel is taking. Suppose for every rotation the count the sensor is giving us the 100 pulses. Yes. So, for one rotation of wheel sensor gives 100 pulses. So, in this case the counter will come into picture now and let us assume the counter is configured to calculate events for rising edge. Okay. So, we have configured our counter that at every rising edge pulse it will give us the increment in the counting. So, the counter now will calculate the number of pulses. So, here is a sensor which is attached from to the wheel with every rotation this sensor will give the 100 pulses. Yes. So, suppose this wheel has made 10 rotations that then how many pulses the counter will read 1000. Yes, because with every rotation the counter is counting 100 pulses. So, if the wheel has taken 10 rotations then how many pulses the counter will show 1000. So, this is how the counter comes into picture. Now, let us talk about the timer. In addition to counting external events it is possible to also count events that are internal to the processor. How? in particular by using the system clock or the derivative. What is the derivative? Suppose uh, the system is of higher frequency in the system clock is of higher frequency and we want the clock of the lower frequency then we can use the prescalers. So, those uh, derived fr uh, frequencies are known as the derivatives. The counter can be incremented at regular intervals in this form the counter becomes the form of timer. So, with every events that the counter can be incremented regularly and then it becomes a timer. Often the system clock is running at some high frequency. However, it is often the case that we may want our timer to count at much slower rates. Then this is handled using the hardware prescalers that divide the system clock down to some reasonable frequencies. To generate the time delays we connect external oscillator to the input pin of the timer or the counter modules. At each tick, now what is happening? At each tick, tick here means rising edge or the falling edge again of the clock that is the external oscillator. Here the clock is the is provided by the external oscillator. The value of the counter increments and the content of the counter register represent the time elapsed. Yes, so as we know that the frequency of the oscillator we can calculate the time elapsed from. So, since we know in the case of counter we did not know that at what frequency the uh, events will come, but here since we are using the pre known uh, oscillator at the input. So, we know the frequency of the coming of events. So, since we know the frequency the counter is giving us the value then we can calculate the time elapsed. So, in this so in this way there is there is a very small difference between the counter and the timer. So, let us have a look at the timer example an external clock that is 5 kilohertz is connected to the microcontroller. Okay. So, this is the clock and which is giving the pulses in one second it will give 500 pulses. Okay. Now, we have configured the timer module to count the rising events. Okay. So, we have configured our timing module also. Now, we want a delay of 5 seconds. So, in 1 second how many pulses were given 5000. Yes. Now, we want to have a delay to generate a delay of 5 seconds. So, how many pulses should be there 25000. So, when the counter will reach to 25000 count we will stop a timer. So, this is how we can get the delay of 5 seconds. 
Now, timer versus counting device. So, what is the difference? So, let let us conclude that external oscillator or event generator are input, ok, fine. External oscillator or the event generator are the input to timer or counter. So, in case of timer that is uh, external oscillator is the input and in case of counter event generator is the input. And in case of timer or counter in both the cases internal register value is in incremented in response to external event ok fine. Now, in case of counter when event occurs counter is incremented and in case of timer external oscillator is external event source and the counter increments ok done. So, in both the cases the counter will increment with every uh, event. So, what is the difference? The difference is in the case of the timer we know that the event is going to occur, but in case of counter we do not know when the event will occur. Otherwise both functionality is almost same and both work on the same principle. Now, in our embedded system applications we come, come across the different types of timers and so as a conclusion these four types of timers are used general purpose timers, cystic timers, real time clocks and watchdog timers. So, the two topics that we will go into detail are the real time timers, real time clocks and watchdog timers. So, but uh, we will have a brief overview of the general purpose timer, these are the normal variety of timers. Suppose after one push of button wait for uh, it will wait for uh, 5 seconds and then turn off the turn on the LED. So, in this type of implementation we will have make use of the general purpose timer. Now, in implementing the state machines example is uh, assembling the robots like blinking of LED. Now, measuring time duration between the events ok. So, in this in the all these general cases we will make use of the general purpose timer. Now, what is the role of cystic timer? It is uh, mainly found in all the ARM Cortex M chips and it is that have a very limited capability. So, unlike the general purpose timers. 60 timers usually have just one mode of operation which is periodic and decrementing. They can be configured to produce either interrupts and they can also be accessed by polling. The clock used by this cystic timer can be either the system clock, system clock can also be used or the slower versions can be used which is known as the ST clock that is stands for cystic clock. So, in this way the both the cystic timers and the general purpose clock differs. So, basically cystic timers are used to make time delays and make the periodic interrupts. They are mainly used in the real time operating systems that is RTOS for periodic interrupts and can be used for context switching and multitasking. Now, let us come to the real time clock. So, these are the, are the low resolution timers as compared to general purpose and cystic timers. They are used to provide the time in the human readable form. So, in most of them in mainly in embedded system applications we make use of real time clock because they, they are not powered off yes. It is usually powered separately by the coin cell so that it can keep on running even if the system is switched off. We can also see that the coin cells on the motherboard of our computer, yes whenever you see your motherboard of the computer you will find the number of the um, that uh, number of the coin cells there and that, that those coin cells are used for the RTC because RTC should be run uh, continuously, it should not be powered off. This keeps the RTC running even if your computer is plugged off ok. So, this type of RTC, this is the just a model of RTC. The implementation can vary depending on the manufacturer. For example, on Texas instrument microcontroller TM4C213G, one of the available general purpose timers can be configured to operate in RTC mode. So, there is no separate peripheral to do this ok. So, there are certain uh, processors where the inbuilt RTC is provided, but in some others the RTC has to be added as a peripheral device and this increases the hardware also. So, some manufacturers may have a separate peripheral just for the use as the RTC. So, there are also separate chips sold and they can be added to your project for use as the RTC. 
So, as a final year project, the BTEC students all uh, prefer to use the RTC for their systems because they want their system to be work uh, to be working in the real time. There are so there are the chips, small chips available along with the that coin cell which will always keep on running the RTCs. There are hundreds of such chips available in the markets and they may vary with the accuracies. And so, examples for all these can be can include DS128 from Maxim integrated products and M4, M48 T18 from ST microelectronics. These are a bit popular RTCs available in the markets for the various student projects. Next is the watchdog timer. This is a very special timer where whose duty is to make sure the system is functioning properly. So, how will it do its duty? So, imagine we have a buggy software that is having the bug and it is running on our PC and we want uh, to appoint some dog to come and press the restart button every time the software becomes unresponsive. So, how it will do? Then whenever the system becomes unresponsive, uh, unresponsive that dog will come and will restart the system. So, you can consider that dog as your watchdog timer. So, this is how the watchdog timer is performing its duties just like the dog in this case. Now, consider the code snippet shown. Let us see the code first. So, this is the code void user tasks. So, here the user tasks are defined do the tasks as asked by the user. Then in this module void system task here all those tasks are defined which are needed by the system void pet watchdog. So, here the we have to pet him and give him a treat that is we have to reset the timer yes. So, even if we do not reset the timer manually the dog will uh, fulfill his duty will perform all the duties of resetting the system. Here is the void main module it will initialize the system first watchdog set timer this is the timer reset timing watchdog start now we will start our watchdog ok. So, now from here the watchdog timer will take uh, will take the responsibility of resetting the system whenever the software is not responsive enough. While true this is the continuous loop and within this loop all those modules are added which have to be executed do user tasks, do system tasks and patch the watchdog that is the reset the timer. So, let us have a look what this paragraph was saying. Here in the main loop the software takes care of the user tasks ok fine. So, we have already defined that user tasks are to be done ok. Now, if the software then it takes care of the system tasks ok fine we have included that also ok. So, here the system tasks are performed. Now, if the software gets stuck somewhere in the user task or the system task then we need to reset the system automatically yes. So, the system needs to be reset automatically and how this is done? This is done by the dog that is our watchdog timer. So, that the end user does not have to do it manually himself. So, whenever the system becomes unresponsive instead of assigning any manual operator that will reset the system we have included a watchdog timer inside our system inside our application that is on chip uh, inbuilt uh, there is uh, this is on chip inbuilt system. So, in that way it will take care that if whenever the software is becomes unresponsive and responsive it will take care that it will reset the system by its own. So, in this way the watchdog timer takes care of the system and performs the duty of the dog. So, in this lecture we went through the uh, 
importance of the timer and the counter devices. So, let us conclude by uh, between these two that what there was the very small hairline that difference between the counter and the timer. So, the counter was used to count the events and the timer was used to create the delays in the system. So, instead of using the instead of introducing the delays using the programming, we can use the timers to introduce the delays in our system. Why we should do that? Because it will make the system more efficient. Because the timers that we use in our system, the hardware timers that we use, these are more precise. So, and the and the counter is always used to in the embedded applications. Suppose there is a room and we have to count the number of entries in the room and the lights and fans or the, and the electrical equipments in the room has have to be switched on whenever the there is a certain count. So, there is a, a sensor can be placed at the main door and it will take care of the number of entries in the room and whenever the count goes beyond that, that then it will actuate the outputs motors that will start the fans and the lights. So, in this way the small and this was just a small example of the home automation system that how the sensors, the processors that uh, then the ADC units, then the DAC units, the actuators work together. So, in this way the counter plays uh, the an important role in such applications where the counting of the events is very important. So, like uh, here we took the example of the timer that in the microcontroller there is a counter placed and it is counting the number of the pulses so, and after uh, and it has to create some delay. Okay. So, the role of the time uh, counter here in the case of timer is to create the delays and depending upon the since we know the frequency of the input oscillator and so we can create a fixed amount of delay in our system. So, in this way we covered all the four types of timers that was a general purpose timer, cystic timers, real time clock and watchdog timers. So, and we went into the details of real time clock and the watchdog timers. So, that is all for today's lecture. Thank you. In subsequent slides, we will uh, study about the uh, different uh, schemes of networking. In the next lecture, we will talk about the networking schemes is used in our embedded systems because this is very important and for the communication part and the different de devices have to communicate between each other. So, we will take care of that uh, part in next slides. Thank you so much.